What's going on everybody? C4 here and welcome to today's episode. It is going to be a franchise mode slash not really an experiment, but kind of an experiment. Uh, this was the most requested idea and I said, yes, this sounds good. What if a team of free agents for the 2019 period? So upcoming free agents next season, guys that will be going to brand new teams come this offseason. A team full of those players, how much damage could they do? And this team is looking a pretty ridiculous as we will go through it, 83 offense, 97 defense, 87 overall. Uh, a couple of missions just because I couldn't make it work, but most of the part is there. Uh, quarterback is going to be Tyrod. Not a lot of good quarterbacks available. You can assume Tyrod's going to leave because Baker Mayfield's there in Cleveland. Teddy Bridgewater is probably the other big name, but I assume that you know the Saints making the move for him. They'll probably resign him. Uh, and that, that's the case with some of these players. I would say at least half of these guys probably aren't going anywhere. They're going to be retained by their base team. But for argument's sake, just to compile guys that you know can make a competitive team, we were kind of wishful with some of these decisions. At running back, another for sure conclusion, it seems, is Le'Veon Bell from the Pittsburgh Steelers, one of the best running backs in football, top three running back, top five running back, no matter who you ask. Seems to be hitting the market. Uh, unhappy with what's going on there in Pittsburgh, so... Uh, looks like it's going to be the James Conner era for the Steelers, which means Le'Veon Bell. That's why I actually chose the Jets as the base team, because it feels like maybe he's going to go to the Jets. Uh, J.H.I. from the Philadelphia Eagles, unlikely to get re-signed. And we have Tevin Coleman here from the Falcons. Uh, you know, good year to need a running back. Looking at the wide receivers, we have Golden Tate from the Lions. Lafer Stell from the Cardinals. Robbie Anderson from said Jets. Chris Hogan from the Patriots. Devin Funches from the Panthers. I'm going to say... You never know what the Patriots. I feel like Chris Hogan would be smart to stay in New England. That's where he's best utilized. Uh, Robbie Anthony, you know, I, I think all these guys will be resigned. The only surprise one could be Golden Tate. If they're trying to maybe change the culture there and change the locker room uh, with new Matt Patricia, especially after watching that Monday opener against the Jets. Things need to change up there in Detroit. So I think Golden Tate, out of all these names, is the most likely to potentially move on if for Larry Fitzgerald to retire or something like that. Uh, tight end, we have Tyler Eifert and Jared Cook. Jared Cook had a massive game in the opener against the Rams for the Raiders. I think he had like 160 something. It was crazy. Uh, I'm going to say he probably will be retained. I think Tyler Eifert will also be retained. Uh, won't be going anywhere. Offensive lines where it's a little bit not not the strongest. If you need an O-lineman, probably hope that you can get one in the draft. Trent Brown from the Patriots. The Patriots made a trade for him, so I'd assume he would get re-signed. You have Roger Saffold here and Levitri uh, will be our guards. I don't know if uh, I'm going to assume... That the Rams don't have the money to resign Saffold and Levitri. Just a solid guard from the Falcons. At center, we're going Ali Marpet from the Bucks. Play center or guard. Uh, and at right tackle, we're going Juwan James from the Miami Dolphins. And Dolphins probably will retain him as well. Look at the defense. We have Brandon Graham of the Philadelphia Eagles and Trey Flowers of the Patriots. I expect both these guys will be retained by their team. Brandon Graham, for me as an Eagle fan, I don't necessarily know if he's going to be worth the money he's going to want given his age. But his importance to the team... His importance to the locker room, I think it'd be probably a tough decision to move on from him. Uh, right defensive end, we're going Tank Lawrence from the Dallas Cowboys. This is one of the things, it should be a short thing, but you never know with Jerry Jones, what he's going to do. He'll probably botch this. He's currently playing on the tag. We have Nanama Kitsu and Grady Jarrett at defensive tackle. I would assume, obviously, Sue's going to leave. He's pretty much a one-year rental for the Rams, and I, I, I put good money that the Atlanta Falcons will re-sign Grady Jarrett. Uh, linebacker, we're going Anthony Barr. Now, this is an interesting one from the, the pulse of the Vikings fans. think he could be the odd man out because they have, you know, locked up a lot of guys there on big money, especially Kirk Cousins. Someone's going to have to go, and it seems like more people are saying Barr than Trey Waynes. We have Jordan Hicks and Quan Alexander. I think both these players will be resigned by the Bucks and the Eagles, respectively. Right outside linebacker, Jadavion Clowney for the Houston Texans. Again, another guy probably won't hit the market. This could be a surprising one, though. Uh, I don't know how much for how much money he's going to demand. I don't know if the Texans can pay him, but I'm going to assume they will because they still have Deshaun Watson on his rookie deal, which means you can kind of throw your money around elsewhere. Secondary, we have Ronald Darby, Trevor Williams, and Mike Hilton. I would assume Hilton will get re-signed by the Steelers. Trevor Williams, you know, could be an interesting one. Darby, as an Eagle fan, I the way that he's playing right now, if he can be consistent throughout the season, it's going to be an absolute kick in the nuts to let him go, but I just don't know if Philly's going to be able to re-sign him. He probably will be. Uh, he can debatably, if he plays as well as, as he did in that opener against Atlanta and shutting down Julio Jones, more often than not, Julio, it was, it was a battle. And the fact that if you can get any corner in this league that can, you know, give it and take it with Julio Jones, they're pretty damn good. Uh, I can see Darby being a top three available free agent come next year. Uh, the safeties, we have Earl Thomas from the Seattle Seahawks. Seems like they're not going to pay him, so he'll probably will hit the market. And at strong safety, LaMarcus Joyner 
Literally no salary cap space for the Rams, so he will be hitting the market. Jake Elliott, the kicker for the Eagles, I expect him to be retained, but you never know. He's kind of shitty and shaky from short. That's why he has the 97 kick power because he's this. I would rather take Jake Elliott on like a 61 yarder than like a 35 yarder. And at punter, we're going Bradley Pinion just because he's the highest rated punter that's set to be a free agent. He's the 49ers kicker. So there you go. That is a team full of free agents. Pretty stacked, especially on the defensive side of things. I, I firmly expect this team to make the playoffs. How far they'll go, we will find out. Let's get into it. Here we are at season's end, making the playoffs as a wild card team, which is kind of surprising as a 90 overall with an 87 offense. 99 defense. Defense is pretty damn scary. Uh, runners up, Patriots. <laughs> no matter what, even if you make a super team, the Patriots are still going to win the AFC East. Look at how our team performed. Pretty good year from Terod. 3,800 passing yards, 34 touchdowns, 7 picks. That's pretty much average for a good team quarterback. We got 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns from Le'Veon Bell. Pretty scary. Uh, receiving front, 76 catches, 1,200 yards, 12 TDs from Golden Tate. 750 and 5. 703. Uh, 575 and 7 from Eifert. Not bad, though. Not bad. Defensively, 118 tackles, 13 tacks for loss, 6.5 sacks for Jordan Hicks. We got 13 and a half sacks from Tank, 11 and a half from Clowney, 8 from Sue, 7 and a half from Brandon Graham. And we got five picks, Earl Thomas, three Mike Hilton, two Joiner, two Barr, and two for Darby. Great defense, man. Yearly awards, Garrett Goff won the MVP. Tyrod coming in at number 10. AFC Offensive Player of the Year went to Tom Brady. Tyrod, Tyrod coming in at four. Le'Veon Bell at six. Defensive Player of the Year went to Ryan Shazier. Jordan Hicks at three. All right, well, we got a long way to go, but uh, I'm going to bank on this team making the Super Bowl, and that is going to be our gameplay because that is a big gamble, but I feel confident. Very nice. In the wild card, we get by the Jacksonville Jaguars 30-24, to putting up 565 yards of offense. Tyrod, 450. What? 14 catches, 200 yards, and a touchdown for Golden Tate, 110 yards for Robbie Anderson. Okay, the Jets are rolling. We got the Browns. In the AFC Divisional, easy. In the Divisional round against the Browns, the Jets roll 31-10. to Player stats, Tarod, revenge against his former team. 262 passing yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Le'Veon Bell, 82 yards and a touchdown. Fitzgerald, six catches, 79 yards, two TDs. As the Jets move on to the AFC Championship game against, you know who, the Chargers. And we get by the Chargers in the AFC Championship. Just squeaking by 27 to 20 to Rod Taylor. 264 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Phil Rivers had that costly interception. Maybe that was the game changer. We shut down Melvin Gordon. Uh, we got Eifert with two touchdowns. Big game there for him. We got defense. Who got the interception? Oh, Darby. Ronald Darby, eight tackles, a tackle for loss, and an interception on the day as the Jets are taking on the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. Let's get into that game. Oh, give me my blocks. Oh, who's that? Who's even? I don't even know who 86 is. Is that Jared Cook? I think it is Jared Cook. After the Eagles pretty much <laughs> melted the clock down for the whole first quarter, the Jets are able to equalize with a Jared Cook touchdown, make it 7-7 apiece at the end of the first quarter. What a play by Cook. What a cut at the end. Who did he burn? Roddy McLeod, I guarantee it. Shitty tackling like that. Oh, it might have been Malcolm. Can I get a number there? That was a great play by Jared Cook. Oh, it's Sidney Jones. Ooh. Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, what a catch by Golden Tate. I thought for sure Avery Williamson, who we had to switch from the Jets to bring in Jordan Hicks, was going to make a play on that. All right, here we go. Right before the two-minute warning, trying to get that seven-point lead. Rather than, oh, we should see Ford special this with Le'Veon Bell. Rather than doing that, we're going to chuck it real quick. Golden Tate again. He deserved the touchdown on that drive. Pretty bad touchdown dance, but don't matter. Jets got that lead. Oh, my God. Jared Cook is a god. Jared, we might have found, along with David Njoku, who the most overpowered user tight end is from this video. First and goal on the six. We do have Larry Fitzgerald, who for most of his career as an Eagle fan, I can tell you, has been the Philadelphia Eagle killer. Let's see if we can get him a piece of the action right th What? Worst pass, top five worst pass of all time. 
All right, because I have no confidence in my defense, we're going for it on fourth and two, down three, just over two minutes to go. I kind of wish Jared Cook was on the field. He's been our best player by a mile. But we'll go to Eifert, which is good enough, and he takes it up to the 50, gets popped by Roddy McLeod, but the Jets are rolling. Let's bring it in live. We're going to play it live from the two-minute warning until whatever happens, the resolution of this game. Uh, we're using default slider, so it is absolutely impossible to run the ball. Uh, oh, we got a little bit there, a little bit of juice, and we're going up against the Eagles, who debatably have one of the best run defenses in the league. Uh, but maybe now it's time to work the clock. We have eight rushing attempts. I think three of those are from Tarod. But uh, Cook has definitely been game ball recipient so far. Unless someone gets a touchdown on this drive, then they can get it. But Eifert, man, our tight ends are working. That's what happens when Paul Warlow is Eagles linebacker in coverage. Do we get a little greasy? I think we get greasy for one play. We'll chew the clock. We'll bleed it down a little bit. Hopefully after the snap, it's into the single single one minute left. Ooh, I'm not going to lie. I don't like this play. I don't like this play call. Step up. We'll go to Eifert again. Quick cheese. Gets held up there by 33. We're up to the four. I feel like I feel like it's time for... We haven't run the ball at all. We got Le'Veon Bell, who's probably the biggest name free agent. The sake of the video, he's probably going to be in the thumbnail. We'll see if we can punch it in with a C4 special. Wearing a unique number six for a running back. Oh, too easy. What's his signature celebration? I've never seen Le'Veon Bell do the comb over, but I guess if you're telling me that's the case, we'll run it. Uh, we have just been playing the moments, but I figure now, because I don't want to lose the game, uh, we'll get some defense in. We'll get some defensive highlights in. All right. The Philadelphia Eagles have to get a touchdown or else our team of super free agents is going to win. Better believe I'm going to use your clowny. Clowny at the end. Even though he's going up against a legend like Jason Peters. Oh, did he catch that? No way. No way. Darby on Aguilar. Pass breakup. Second and 10. Didn't get any pressure there. Let's see what else. I mean, we... You pick your poison. You want to go against Jason Pierce. You want to go up against Lane Johnson. Let's see if we can take our chances between Kelsey and Wisniewski. Man. Oh, no, 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 no. Of course they're going to get a shot. They have goddamn Carson Wentz in at quarterback. He's only missed what? Six times this whole game. He's only been off. God damn it. It's not like we have a 99 overall defense. Maybe Tank Lawrence. Tank Lawrence going up against Lane Johnson. Myself, my alter ego. Man, we're not getting any pressure. A good little pass break up there by 24. Oh, good pass break up, 52. I think that was Hicks. Oh. Oh, okay. Right on. First and 10 from the 17. This could very well be final play of the game. I kind of hope it is. Hopefully, we can kind of make Wentz want to scramble and extend it. Oh, there, Or you just check it down with zeros on the clock. And our team of super free agents is able to win the Super Bowl to the surprise of probably not a whole lot. To be honest with you, this team is pretty freaky. I guess the more so surprising thing is a team with Tarod Taylor at quarterback and a pretty average offensive line, all things considered, was able to win the Super Bowl. So a successful episode of the kind of one-off career modes. As always, guys, if you have any suggestions for these style of videos that you want to see, some sort of team builder, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always willing to add these in. We might do them once a week. I don't know. Um, but if you guys did enjoy it, it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Likes help me out a lot right now, I guess. YouTube's telling me that the algorithms kind of change and videos with more likes do better. So keep on liking away. And uh, until next time, it's C4. Saying peace out.